This meeting to order. My name is Joe McGivern. I'm the uh, chairman of the Holyoke City Council's Finance Committee. Uh, members of the committee present, uh, all five uh, to my far left, Councillor Kevin Jordan. Next to him, Councillor Juan Anderson Burgos. To my right, Councillor Peter Tallman. And to our far right, Councillor Will Paolero. Oh, sorry, Will. Hello. <laughs> I know. I, I, I want to roll that all the time. I, I don't know why. <laughs> it's never mind. Um, we have an agenda tonight. We are um, the committee is not hybrid, so we will be taking normal uh, votes uh, in session. Five members present, and we have 13 items. We're going to be moving around a little bit because some department heads and some guests can't be here till later. But uh, without uh, this is being televised live. We are on Zoom is an option for anybody, and we are being streamed. Uh, the chair will take a motion for the first item. Motion to take item number one off the table for discussion. Second. Motion made second to take item one off the table for discussion. If there is no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, this is from our mayor, Mayor Joshua Garcia, a letter electing to contract with Cataldo Ambulance Services of Somerville, Mass. for emergency ambulance services in Hoyoke. The effective date of separation with Action Ambulance Service Incorporated is or was October 1st, 2022. Uh, under discussion, Mayor Garcia is with us. Uh, Mayor, welcome as always. You're welcome to come in and sit or use the mic there, if you, whichever you feel more comfortable with. Councilors, good evening. I apologize. I sent that letter probably about two months ago, and I apologize you're getting it now, but I'm assuming it's because you were on recess and then you came back and <clears throat> and so forth. Uh, it, was, it wasn't the recess. It was September. We had election night for the first election Tuesday and, and Big E night for the third mm -hmm. Tuesday. Right, right. And we only had one special meeting in between, so it just fell in the, in the cracks. Is the fire chief on? Yes, he is. We, uh, we welcome via Zoom our fire chief. Where are you, chief? Hi. Chief, there welcome. He is. How are you doing? Doing great. Thank you for joining us. Uh, no problem, Councillor. <clears throat> so they put this out for RFP on 328 um, for the, you know, for contracting the uh, emergency ambulance service. Um, they had a date of 412 to send any questions back on the RFP. Um, we had to respond to them by 419, and their proposals were due on 426. Um, we had a committee that was made up of myself, the police chief, uh, purchasing department, which was Lori at the time, um, the city solicitor, and Carl Cameron from Hoyoke uh, Medical Center. Um, we had got proposals from three companies, Armstrong Ambulance, Cataldo, and Action. Um, after the process started, Armstrong had uh, pulled back their proposal and, and elected not to move forward. And after you know going through and interviewing the companies and getting their you know getting their actual proposals, how they're going to run the service, we felt that uh, Cataldo was the best fit. Um, Chief, just a few questions, just so we're all yes, on the sir. same page here. Um, who put it out to bid? Uh, the city did. Well, who who in the city made that decision? I believe the mayor. Yeah, okay. I, I wasn't the chief at the time, but I believe the mayor did. No, no, I, I just want to make sure because. It doesn't have to go out the bid. No, no. Well, so um, I, the chief at the time, which was Preskopowski, uh, Chief Prez, when I came in, we sat down. I evaluated all, being the new mayor, looking at all contracts in the city of Holyoke, and those that were coming to expire, we, well, I was, I pretty much concluded there that it was healthy to go in a bidding process. Um, so, no, we didn't necessarily have to. The contract period was expiring. We could have continued, but we thought it'd be healthy to keep the organization on its toes and going through a formal bidding process. Which is your prerogative, and I don't, I'm not being um, I'm cynical. I'm, I'm just saying I want yep. to make sure everybody understood that because it's a professional contract, which is very important to the city. Absolutely. And it's not just about, sometimes people think RFP is just about the money but it's about the service. And, and, and we have to make sure we have an ambulance service provider that can live up to, and Action did a fantastic job over their period. And I think we just wanna make sure we got the, uh, 
the same thing coming in with the new company. And Action did submit their proposal. There was a cost included in that proposal, uh, an additional, I think, I don't know, Chief Mark, if I'm wrong, 800000 for additional ambulance. I, I believe that's it. I, can, I, got their, uh, I got their proposal. Let me just take a quick look for you. Um, uh, if you just bear with me and give me one second for me to find it. Is, is that in the materials, Mr. Chairman? Uh, the because if can I ask a question quick? If uh, Councilor Janine, while you're looking, just ask a quick question. Yeah, um, Mayor, is it possible for Fire Chief to give us like a summary that says in this column, you know, all the you know, weight all the different factors that you considered and have, you know, this is Action's proposal, and then a summary on this side that has all of Cataldo's on those like. This one required us maybe to pay nothing for new ambulance. This one wanted 800 grand for ambulances or whatever those are. And if you could just go through the reasons, so we now have the agreement, but if there could be some sort of executive summary or punch list that goes why they were selected versus the other firm, that would be helpful to us. There, it, was, uh, advent, it was advantageous, highly advantageous rating type of RFP, right, Chief? So I'm assuming. I'm sorry, you, Mayor. When you guys evaluated the proposal, the the RFP process, you rated them advantageous, highly advantageous. Yeah, and again, it was it was uh, there was the factors were who we thought were going to be able to actually. We took in financials, so we right. looked at the, the so, financial stability of the the ambulance service itself. Yes. Um, it, there there was all those things went into the factoring too. So each of the uh, folks on the committee uh, did their individual evaluation. I think it'd be good to have a copies of those evaluations. We can forward them to the council. And then the summary, uh, whatever the recommended was, summary was, that was produced was looking at the for end. And action was looking for a sum of, of $917,438 a year for, to provide $76,000 a month. So yeah, we'll... we'll what the councilor is looking for will let's produce the result of the evaluations and the final summary that was that that came forward with the recommendation to move forward with the current existing contracts that way i think that's what you're looking for councilor right exactly yeah, yeah just like what were the factors what was the pros cons of each one of these and then how did you arrive at the decision yeah, i think that the, yeah. the, the, those documents exist oh good yeah, you can share those with us. That, and we'll do our homework on those. Chief, how much uh, did Cataldo's bid come in at? Uh, there, there was no cost to Cataldo, and they were giving us, I think their day shift, um, the service they're giving us a day shift coverage-wise, they're putting three BLS and three ALS ambulances in the system, which um, Action was looking for that money to be able to put Two ALS and one BL and two BLS in the system, or three ALS and two BLS. So we're getting one more ambulance during peak hours, which is the the daytime during the weekdays, and then off peak we're getting two ALS and one BLS. Um, and then there's also provisions in the contract that if either one of these ends up not being enough, that they're going to add trucks. And will the Cataldo be staying on South Street, or will they be going back into the stations? Um, we're, they're in Station 5, and they're also going to be staying on South Street, and I believe that's something, uh, I, I think they have a very real interest in purchasing South Street. Okay, so right now, is there a lease agreement for them to rent it? Um, they're working on that with the city solicitor. And you're satisfied that the amount of ambulances and service will be comparable or better than Action's proposal? Yes, it's it's the same on the night shift as what Action was. Get, they're just giving us a whole lot more on the on the days, which is their what they're calling their peak hours. Okay, and during their peak hours, will they be doing private transportation, or will they be solely dedicated to emergency calls in the city? Um, they will be doing transfers out of Hoyle Hospital. Out of Hoyle Hospital? Yeah, that, that's part of the deal with Carl Cameron. 
to make sure he's okay, able what, to get what, What's first. happening with Hoyle Hospital's ambulance? They, Hoyle Hospital doesn't have an ambulance. The Holyoke Hospital action ambulance was the ambulance. Yeah, was the, the one you saw with Holyoke Medical Center on them? Those were action ambulance, the same as Catal. Those are going to have Holyoke in in alliance or with Holyoke Medical Center. But, but I, I let me re rephrase it. Didn't Holyoke Medical have an agreement with Action to provide the one or two ambulances that they use on a daily basis for transportation? Yeah, they have a side agreement outside of ours with Cataldo. But that should be ambulance, you know, that should be ambulances on top of what we just agreed to with Cataldo, no? Otherwise, you know, these things are going to be tied up with transportation and we're not going to have anybody to service an emergency. They're, as part of the way they're doing the system, they also have a, a facility in Chicopee that they run out of also that they're, they'll supplement with. What does that have to do with your question? I, uh, Chickabee is three times the size of Hoyoke in uh, both population and, and uh, ge geography. They're, um, they're, I, I don't, they, don't, they don't run E911 out of Chickabee. That's a, that's a facility that they do transfers out of mobile integrated healthcare. So if they need ambulances out of there, they can get them out of there if the six in our system get tied up. Thank you. The chair apologizes for tying all this up. Is there any other discussion? There was no financial cost associated with Cataldo, but Action wanted us to pay them so much money? Yes. Okay. Well, that's obviously a big factor. Yeah. Uh, and you said it was 76000 a month is what Action was asking for? Yeah. To be, uh, I'm sorry, Counselor. Um, to be able to provide the three... ALS and two BLS, they wanted nine hundred and seventeen thousand four hundred thirty-eight dollars a year. Seventy-six thousand four hundred and fifty-three sixteen. They wanted due on the first of each month. <laughs> How much have we been paying them so far? It hasn't been any cost, right? That would have been a new cost. That would have been a new cost because we were asking for another ambulance in the I system. See. I see. So for ba so basically them versus Cataldo. Cataldo was giving that that level of service that you were looking for for free, whereas to have that level of service, Action wanted to be paid the seventy six thousand. Yes, and I think it looks into when you go deeper into the uh, when we look at some financials. I think they're just their financial standing is different. Okay. Okay. Um. So. If I understand the tr private transport situation, when these ambulances are designated for us during these periods of time, they're working exclusively for the citizens of Holyoke. They're not doing private transports, right? They have other ambulances to do that with Holyoke Medical, correct? Um, no, they, want, they are using one of the ambulances within there if needed, because um, what, what they basically are running is... A, we were looking for straight dedicated when we were talking about it, which, and they were basically, they wanted to run a system where they run six trucks, three ALS and three BLS within the system. And if they have one available for a transfer, they could peel one of those out as opposed to not having, you know, having one in a different city for the transfer out of Hoyle Hospital. To be honest, Hoyle Hospital doesn't do a lot of transfers out. It was, they, it was yeah. Did they give you those statistics so you could evaluate how often that would occur? Is it once a day? Is it how like do you do we have statistics from the hospital on how many that would be? I think Carl Cameron was talking about it's about five to six a day. Okay. That that's not considered a lot. In the transport world, I don't believe it is. As far as ambulance services go, I, I don't believe that's considered a lot. Okay, so let me ask a question then. If if we're, we're so under the Cataldo bid, we're getting one more ambulance effectively than we were with Action, correct? No, 
if we paid if we paid action the million dollars we're getting one more ambulance than we would with action no i understand that but without paying dollars yeah without the 917 within the system during the day we're getting three more ambulances okay so comparing apples to apples one with no cost and the other you're saying that cataldo is providing us during the day three more ambulances than action yes okay they have, and like i said they have that ability to rotate one into a transfer if need be okay um, but, but even if they're doing those transports we're still one or two ambulances ahead of the game Exactly. Okay. All right. That's and important. When the, All right. When the hours were transports in the non-peak hours, then they dropped to the two ALS and the one BLS. We're still giving us three, three trucks for the nine one one system. Okay. Um, I suppose this will be a conversation for another day. But if it is the desire for them to purchase South Street from us as opposed to lease it as we've done before and, and by the way we've had other ambulance companies as you know before action mm -hmm. why would us why would we want to entertain the sale of that facility considering that in the past has always been where we put the ambulances and if they buy it then doesn't that sort of give them leverage in the future for the next three-year renewal because now they own our ambulance center as opposed to leasing it, i.e., like just what we're doing with action, right? We cut you loose. Goodbye. You're out of South Street. You're out of our contract. See you later. Wouldn't we want to have that same leverage every three years? It seems to me that if we were to sell them the facility, it's almost like embedding them permanently as our future ambulance company and that gives that takes away leverage at the bargaining table it would seem to me i i don't know if so i just hope you're considering that before you bring that to to us um lord only knows what they're offering to pay for it probably not much but nevertheless that that was always intended to be our ambulance place we've talked we've talked about that and actually we talked about that very point that very point um there's a considerable amount of investments that need to take place you know it's getting old it hasn't been really like a lot of other things deferred maintenance uh we can a fix it up mm -hmm. to honor that very point you raised and, and we did talk about that or b you know not be in the business of property management and sell it but it's it's a very important point to consider for sure it's we continue to evaluate what we're going to do but they did express interest of potentially buying it we just got to kind of figure out what we want to do here well they they had they would have every interest in the world of buying it i would immediately ask to buy it if i were in their shoes the question is we're on the short end of that stick if that deal goes bad because three years from now they could say <laughs> Hey, we want nine hundred grand. Remember action? Remember when they wanted nine hundred? We want nine hundred. And now they own the building. I mean, they've kind of it's 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 how you burrow in, you know. And you they sometimes you got to be careful that they don't give you a sweetheart deal at the beginning, sort of like action did. And then down the road they they push the leverage and say, hey, we want nine hundred grand now, you know. It, but you guys are smart enough to see that coming, but. Just for emphasis, I point these things out. Thank you. Chief, just a, a couple more things. Can you update us on your apparatus, on the stats for medical response? What what vehicles are is the Hoyle Fire Department sending out? What are the stats? Are we still beating the ambulance to the scene? Um, I don't have the stats right in front of me, Counselor. Um, but what we do run is we run our apparatus. Uh, Right now, we, we run our engine companies and truck companies. Truck companies when needed. Engine companies go out first. Um, right now, our engine one, which is at headquarters, and our engine six out on Homestead are both actually classified as uh, class five ambulances also. Um, we I think when, like we have, when you have uh, dispatch properly, we're gonna be beating them there. We had some issues right at the end with some hiccups with action. Uh, but I think on a normal basis, we're, we're doing the first responding that we're supposed to. 
but I, I don't have those stats in front of me. I can get them for you, sir, if, you, if you'd like them. Well, for, I, I get, and it's you should, every firefighter should be commended for their first your first responding, and uh, medical issues are a high priority. But we don't have the apparatus, if my memory serves me correct, to do it correctly. If we have to send out a pumper or another piece of fire apparatus, we're putting wear and tear on a very expensive vehicle, vehicle, that vehicle and at the same time have an ambulance service that should be beating us to the, to the, uh, to the response. And we should be there you know, to back up and to make sure that someone's there as quick as possible. I get that, but you know, it comes with a price to pay. And the apparatus that you're sending out is for firefighting and is very expensive. Yes, sir. Can we get those stats too? I, I can get those for you. Anything else? I actually did have one more. Councilor Dredding. Did action either annually or otherwise provide you with a, a, the uh, statement of their uh, accounts billable? That Because obviously they're not offering out their free ambulance service to people, just so we're all clear on that. They're making money on this. So do, do they provide the city with any statements as to how much money they were making annually off our business? I'm not positive of that, Councilor. Well, could we look into that? Because that's an important ingredient in all this, especially, again, back at the bargaining table when someone says, hey, uh, we want a brand new roof on you know, South Street, and we want you to paint the place, and we want to do this and do that. You're basically building them an ambulance station for them to use, which I believe they use for a small, you know, not a huge fee, unless we're building it into the lease payments. But... You know, they, they bill for all this work. It would be kind of interesting for the taxpayers to know, especially as money's changing hands back and forth, what, how much money's going in their hand. We know how much comes in and out of our hands. You know, I think everybody at the table needs to be working with the same information. So I, I would think you might want to consider asking them for financial reporting, probably too late now on action, but going forward on Cataldo, you might want to know, you know, what's the what's the dollar value of this agreement to them, especially when conversations happen about what's fair and what's right and what's just financially. Thank you. Yeah. Any further discussion? So I guess we just received it, right, Mr. We don't have to do I, anything. Yeah, we. this is a professional contract, if my memory serves me correct. It's solely up to the mayor to, uh, to choose and the mayor's prerogative. Um, certainly the city council and the uh, more important, the uh, residents of Oyo have a right to understand the contract. And mm -hmm. not, like I said, it's not just about the money. It's about the service and the impact it has on the fire department itself and all of our mm -hmm. citizens. But um, we, can, we can receive it and say we've done you know, our our due diligence and complied with. Motion to receive the, um, the contract from Cataldo and uh, the, the item is complied with. Second. On that motion, all those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Next one. Yeah. Four. Motion to take item number two off the table for second. discussion. Motion made and second to take item two off the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? This is a request of a transfer from Repair and maintenance office equipment of $2,500 to professional services employee training, $1,000, and systems hardware, $1,500 for a total of $250. Under discussion, we have our human resource personnel director, Kelly Curran, with us. Kelly, welcome. Hello, how are y'all? Doing Hello, great. Good. Good. Kelly, can you walk us through the uh, transfer, why there's a surplus in R&M office equipment? and where you're, where you're requesting to transfer it into, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I believe there's a surplus in the RMM. I'm not sure exactly what it used to be used for, but I think it was toner. Um, the printer that we had was very outdated and the toner was more expensive than getting like a new printer is. Um, we rely on the solicitor's copier to print, scan, um, and, and copy documents. 
when theirs runs out, it puts us in a hard situation. Then we have to go to retirement and try to use theirs. So we wanted to get a printer and copier that was also scan um, and add it to the city um, contract that we have with Xerox. And so it would be around $1,500, um, and it includes the toner. So it's actually a savings. Um, instead of buying new toner, uh, and it would cost more to buy new toner than it would to get a new printer, copier, scanner. Um, so that's what some of that money's for, the $1,500. And the 1000 would be for professional services for myself to participate in um, the Mass Municipal Human Resource um, conferences and other um, trainings that they have where other human resource professionals and personnel directors gather, share practices, get updates on new um, policies, etc. Thank you, Kelly. Is there any discussion? I'll make a motion to be approved. Motion I'll made second. a second that the uh, committee approves the, can the uh, transfer and recommends that to the full city council for tomorrow evening. All those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? It passes 5-0. Kelly, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Number three. Um, I think our uh, conservation director is has another commitment. He will be here shortly, so if we could skip over three and four. Okay. Want to go to five? Sure. Okay, motion to remove five from the table. Second. second. Motion made a second to remove item number five from the table. So in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53A, the City Council accepts the provisions of the Fiscal 2023 Municipal Road Safety Program, uh, $35,000. There is no match. Grants the authorizes an establishment of fund or other method appropriate for the accounting of the receipts and expenditures of all resources associated with the administration of said grant. Uh, off the table and under discussion, we have with us Sergeant Hart. Or is this, no, this is a... Uh, it's police, it is police, I think. Is it police? This is for the police, police department. department. This is for the police department. Yep. Safety grant. So is, I mean, is that the traffic grant? Oh, okay. Yes, John, thank you and welcome. Can you just walk us through the grant, please? Sure, so this is um, <clears throat> a grant to uh, a mass uh, 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 traffic through EOPS, EOPS of grants and, uh, and research. Um, it's a state grant that's um, given to us uh, annually um, based on population. So this year's uh, grant award is $35,000. Um, and what we did was we split it up. Um, $23,400 is going towards um, traffic enforcement for six uh, separate mobilizations. And the other 11600 is going for equipment um, we're looking to get two uh, traffic uh, speed signs and one uh, data collector to give us some uh, some data on that. So speaking of data, what we did for this grant, I went into our own uh, IMC system and also used some stats from the uh, MAX program, that's the uh, Motor Vehicle Automated Citation and Crash System. And from January, uh, one 2021 to December 31st 2021 one year the most dangerous roadways um, were Main Street with a total of 131 accidents throughout the 20 intersections on that roadway followed by um, uh, Northampton Street with 117 accidents third was Hyoke Street with 82 accidents Cabot Street with 79 and Maple Street with 73 accidents the times for the accidents range from 147 accidents at 3 p.m. to 124 accidents at 12 p.m. The highest accident times are from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. with a total of 680 accidents or 43% of all accidents. Um, some of our plans are, are to deploy our patrols within those um, uh, four Main Street uh, corridors or five um, different long stretches of, of roadways that we have. Um, within those those peak hours, um, with some flex on, on each end of those hours, 
Other data also shows that accidents most often happen on Thursdays and Fridays, equally at 265 accidents each. In addition to this information, we found that the most accidents are from operators between the ages of 26 and 35 years old for both male and female, for both male and female with 347 accidents for the males and 276 accidents for the females. And this is followed closely by those aged 46 to 60 with 280 accidents for males and those aged 36 to 45 for females with 191 accidents. So that's all the information I have for this grant. There are no administrative fees for this. It's all overtime and equipment. John, how many speed signs do we have before this? I think we may have two other speed signs and maybe one mobile one that we can attach to like a pole with a solar panel on it. Okay. So these, the two years you're looking to buy are the ones that are moved around? Yes, the trailers, yeah. Okay. And what is the data tracker? Is that what you called it? Yeah, that's going to give us information on those machines. We're going to be able to, I believe we also have, you know, in our budget, annual service fees for some of the other traffic trailers that we have just to give us accurate data. Even though the signs may not be flashing or off, they can still collect data as far as speeds and stuff like that. And what's the cost for the two speed signs and what's the cost for the data tracker? So for the two Shield 12 displays, it's a total of $8,666. So that's $433.3 a piece. And for the data tracker, it's $2,934. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Councilor Jardine. Yeah. John, would it be possible to send something? Because in, like when we get our packet five, it has none of these details. It doesn't have the statistics. It doesn't say $8,000 for this and $3,000 for that. It just says, accept a grant for 35 grand. Have a nice day. And we really would like the meat and potatoes in these finance. So when the request comes up from the police department, can you send all this detail with the request from the chief to the mayor to get on our agendas? Because we actually do read that stuff. And, um, you know, it's nice to report back to the citizens where the money's going. And, and, and people love this kind of, you know, the traffic so much on this street and that. I mean, that's... We're sort of hungry for that kind of information. If you would be kind enough to send that along with your request in the future. Sure, no problem. Thank you um, so much. Also, I just want to let you know, I did send um, each counselor a uh, summary for, for this year's past traffic uh, enforcement grant. Any further discussion? Make a motion to be approved, Mr. Chairman. A second. And Motion has been made and seconded to approve the request of uh, accepting the grant and all that goes with it. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It passes five to zero. Um, Thank you. Thank you, John. Is Number six, maybe? The only is not here yet. Okay. Nope, we're still waiting. Hello, Tanya, is she here? Number seven. We have someone from IT or whatever. It looks like number six is an IT item. Yeah, she's here. Yep. So does she do number six too? Or no? Is she? No. She's here for six. She is? There, there's a reason. Yeah. Okay. Six Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Motion take item number six off the table for discussion. Second. Motion made and second to take item six off the table. All those in favor? Any Aye. opposed? This is the request of the amount of $9,705 be authorized from the IT department's professional consulting 20000 $20,457 be authorized from the Police and Fire Network Administration. administration. Uh, the appropriation is for fiscal year 2023 for services that were rendered in fiscal year 2022, but were unencumbered at the end of the year. 
Uh, it's off the table for discussion. We have our auditors with us, and I believe the chief was going to join us. And I'm not sure if anybody's here from IT, but the auditor is here to explain the uh, what happened with these bills and why we're being requested to use 2023 dollars for 2022 bills. Tanya, welcome. Thank you. Tanya, are you taking the uh, the lead on this? Yes, that would be fine. Okay. Can you walk us through what happened and what we're being asked of? Absolutely, I can. Um, so this is actually an invoice from Wally Computer Associates from billing from June of 2022. And I wasn't even aware that it was outstanding until just recently. But I do know that our computer budget was cut by the $40,000 last year. So my guess is that's why um, the 30162 didn't get paid. So I would like to pay that. Um, we are no longer doing business really with Wally. I think they work in our, in our police department a little bit. But I mean, it is from June. And I would like to get this aid in the mayor um, approved for it you get paid out of the 2023 budget if you also approve. Tanya, the starting in 2022, the Wally computer um, budget, which used to be part in the police department budget and part in the IT de department budget, I believe just about mm -hmm. all merged into one budget in IT. Who, who's responsible for vetting that this invoice is correct and that we do all the money? I absolutely reached out to Wally Computers. I checked our accounts payable. We never did. Um, we never did pay this this bill. I can actually just look right into the accounts payable. I do know that we received the service as well. They did work for us through June um, of 2022. Okay, but the the actual work done. Do we have IT or, or Chief Pratt telling us the work was completed accordingly? It, well, this is actually for our maintenance. Uh, this was for our monthly maintenance. So that has everything to do with our servers, all of the, um, I don't really know what IT does. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not an IT professional, but they said it's, uh, it's for like monitoring, uh, managed services for licenses, third wall licensing, automated patching, service, the clamp license, whatever that happens to mean. So this was their monthly fee. And I do know that the HPD also has a contract with them and they do other things for the HPD. So this wouldn't so much be the services that the police department would approve, but some of the things that come out of the mayor's agreement with the uh, IT department, with the I, IT consultant. If, if I could stop you there, if this is the invoice, it's numbered M... MS 36445, and on the invoice yes. it shows Hoyoke Police Department 16,182. That was from the budget that was moved from the police. So the police was pay the police and the fire were originally paying for all of these services themselves. And I believe, I think it was Mayor Morse maybe, brought everything from the police department for this purpose into the IT department. And that was probably, I don't know, three years ago maybe. So I, this is a part of, go ahead. No, no, no you're, you're, you're connecting the dots for us. I, I'm just looking for, is someone here, who is the IT department? Um, that would be the mayor's office. And we do have a new consultant, Novus IT. But it, it's the mayor's office that is now managing the IT budget. Uh, purchasing used to do that prior for a while as well. I just really just want to get this bill paid, to be honest. So. I, I understand. You're, you're part of the answers here, but I think we need more answers, and at least I need more answers as far as did um, you know, these services, whether they be the hardware hardware or software or whatever, and I, I'm in the same boat. You know, I'm not, you know, the best that can elaborate everything an IT department does, but I understand why it's necessary. But like any department and any bill, especially when things changed over the last three years, where there were direct services to police, not, not so much, but direct services to fire, and then the city hired Wally to take over for the gas and electric, 
and you know, I, I think someone's got to be watching the uh, the chicken coop, and I just want to make sure we're on the same page. I appreciate your answers, Tanya, and I appreciate you reached out to Wally, who Wally Computer, who I have respect for. I just looking for some more here, Councilor Jardine. It sounded like we're phasing out Wally. Yeah. Okay. So what what's the new? Who's the replacement for Wally? That would be Novus IT. Novus? Novus. So w was that, a, that was another bid that went out? Or whatever? Uh, New contract? That came out of the mayor's office in purchasing, so I can't say, um, I would have to say it's either a state contractor or it did go out for bid, yes. And when did Novus start? July 1st? Correct. Okay. And this bill here, Tanya, says $111,000, but that all of it was paid except for the 9705 portion. Is that it? I don't really think that's supposed to say 111. I think they were just like Xing it out, actually. Okay. Then the first line says 30,162. That's correct. Okay. And so the other departments already paid the other portions of it? Mm, no, I'm asking for the, there's two lines in the computer budget. One is for the city, and the other one is for the police and fire network system. So this is all about your network. Yes. So I just broke it out on the order because it's two separate budget lines. So um, no, none of it has paid. Uh, okay. so. Unless I'm seeing any other things on the agenda this evening, the only portion, oh, I see what, okay, I see what's going on. So there's a request for 9705 from IT and then 20,457, which must be the police and fire together. That's those two portions, I see, okay. I see. Hmm. Interesting. All right. But that's kind of interesting. Why is the bill thirty thousand when these numbers? Yeah. Okay. So they've got. But if you do the addition, oh, all three combined is thirty, and then and then ninety-seven and twenty thousand. I see. Okay, makes sense. Yep. All right. Got it. It tallies out to the thirty-one sixty-two. Okay. Very good. Okay. Any further discussion? Um, I have questions that are unanswered. <laughs> I, I do. So make a motion to table it. Make a motion that we table this to get uh, further answers to the questions of the chair, if nobody else, and I appreciate that. Sure. On the motion to table, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Um, item number seven, we did invite Chief Pratt. Uh, I don't know, Sergeant Hart, I think has left us. And I don't know if anybody's here, but we do have a copy of the, the uh, annual contract, I guess, for police cruisers and how we're doing business these days. Well, we take it off the table for a quick discussion. Motion to take item seven off the table. Right. Motion and second to take item seven off the table for discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, this is, is from our auditor, so I, Tanya, we welcome you. But it's a purchase agreement for police cruisers, lease schedule number one, and master lease purchase agreement. And I, I take it that the money for this is in the budget already? Yes, these actually, uh, one of them was from 2019, and then the other is from 2022. So, yes. The last payment for the 2022 will be paid this year in 2023. Okay, but you you, you filed the purchase and the purchase agreement for the cruisers on our agenda. For what reason did you do that? I had asked for, in fairness, to ah, I had asked for a copy okay. of the agreement because I wanted us to be able to have I these understood. documents. Understood. Because okay. we saw this as the lease in the budget, but we were looking for the details, and we were kind of hoping at some point the chief would come in and discuss. So uh, Tanya was very good to get us what we requested, but now the question is, 
how's this going? Can we get some, uh, have a discussion about the contract? Is it working as intended? Is this materializing into a savings? So I don't know if the chief. Hey, I Usually the chief is very good about responding if he can't make it and or okay. about sending someone who could help answer questions. So I, I suggest that we table it. For I'll reach out meetings. to him myself and uh, okay. see if there's a good, uh, for upcoming meeting, good time for him to come in. Sounds good. Motion to table. Motion to second. second to table. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. <clears throat> okay. Uh, no Yoni yet, so we can go on to eight. Motion, Motion to take eight. eight off the table. Second. Motion made a second to take item eight off the table. Um, there are transfers that go with this. One I'll explain that we're actually going to be uh, sending back and one that would uh, address this MOA. The item eight is a memorandum of agreement between the City of Hoyoke and Professional Supervisors Union, the PSA, Damian Cody employed as the building commissioner, effective July, this MOA is effective July 1st, 2022, and goes through June 30th, 2023. Uh, we, we invited uh, Mr. Cody, uh, Jennifer, the president of the new president, or current president of the PSA, Jennifer Keat, and uh, our city solicitor, Lisa Ball. Uh, for purposes of discussion, off the table, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. We got Damien here. Our city solicitor was unavailable, I believe. And we do, we do have uh, our building commissioner, and uh, certainly, Damien, you're part of this, so welcome. The transfer that goes with this particular MOA is item number nine, which is $7,000 from property maintenance. Uh, superintendent into the pay for the building commissioner. If we want to take it off just to discuss it. This yes, time. I'll okay. take item nine, nine off the table. Okay. For purposes of discussion, uh, we'll take item nine off. Our, our responsibility to city council is the appropriation that yep. goes with an MOA. We put the MOA on the, on the agenda, although we don't negotiate, nor do we, um, the only way we, we, we can uh, endorse the MOA is by agreeing to the appropriation, which is our, our purview. And if you notice, Mr. Chairman, you might want to read section two of the MOA real quickly. It's only one sentence, but a, a, a sentence that's a very important sentence, item two. The the item two on the MOA is a one-page agreement, and it's the parties acknowledge that the provisions of this agreement are subject to appropriation. Thank you. Which is which is standard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But anyways, uh, Damien, first of all, welcome. Uh, and I believe right now, I believe you're on your own, which is fine. But welcome. Do you want to walk us? I know it's about you, but can you walk us through this agreement and? Sure. Um, you know, and no problem being on my own. I, that's uh, that's been a trend here. So, uh, <laughs> the, um, basically, this goes back to, and I don't know if everybody's aware, the sealer of the weights and measures was an employee of the city when I started um, 11 years ago, and a few years after, I think he retired, and we never replaced this individual. We contracted it with the state um, because we had to have somebody. And the state, being our community is so large, didn't want to do it, but did it because we had nobody. But the law requires us at our population to hire our own. So they really hung on for a while. Um, I think we squeezed all we could have asked out of the state. And a couple of years ago, they started sending notices telling us, hey, we, they're gonna cut the cord. Um, and they did. So this is where this is all born out of. Now, in the, in the years that the state did the work, they performed minimal inspections, and we contracted for $18,000 a year. We sent them the check, um, and they didn't do any billing. Um, this is something that I caught as an issue. I'd say, f you know, it feels like only three, but I'm adding on two or three for COVID in my brain nowadays. So it's probably about five years ago. <laughs> And we started doing, uh, first, if you remember, those of you I did a, uh, asked for a change into the uh, fee schedule, and that happened because um, that was out of date. And then we uh, were taking care of billing through the city and managing this. Other departments had chipped in, but it's uh, we've been on our own for the last two years anyway in the building department. So we've been collecting the money, and the state was doing the inspections until June of this year. 
Since June, we've had nobody. Um, so this has all been voluntary work on my part for the last uh, two to five years, however you want to look at it, because there's been a need in the city. Um, I have no real dog in this fight. If, if we don't want to go forward with this, um, I'm okay with it. I don't need another speck of work, uh, given all everything else I have, but I, I told the mayor I, I can't in good conscience keep adding more work to my job in my base when I, when I, you know, I'm not getting compensated even what the other surrounding communities and my peers are being compensated. Uh, I'm well under that, the, the, the base of anybody else and they're not doing half what I'm doing. So that's where we're at. Um, I said, I'm willing to take it on. I'm willing to, to tweak the job description, find some equipment, get somebody hired, uh, manage that position uh, in 100% entirety. Uh, no problem, but there's got to be some kind of compensation to at least bring me closer to to what the rest of my peers are making. Thank you. And um, just on, on a, a little bit, sewer weights and measures, the, the duties that are performed by that position or that service is so underrated, I think, and, and it has been in this city. Um, whether it's a gas pump or whether it's a scale that's at a, a grocery store or I, I'm, I'm probably not even touching, you know, more than the tip of the iceberg, Damien, but, you know, what, you know we, we have, and I'm not saying people are, would be purposely doing anything wrong, but if we, we don't have the uh, watchdog out there, you know, all of a sudden we have equipment that's not, uh, not working properly and people are being charged incorrectly. Is, am I kind of summing it up correctly? Yeah, it's, it's everything you're saying, and, and I would say multiply that times 10. Um, I, like you, believe there were certain things the common person would know, and, and then I spent more weekends and I, you know, care to relive uh, researching, learning about the licensure and everything they do, but it goes as far as anything measured, anything weighed, that's your oil truck deliveries, that's, of course, your, your taxi cabs and, and the equivalent thereof nowadays. Uh, all the scanners in every store. So when you think of the mall, everything they hold in their hand and they scan a product, those get inspected for accuracy. It's thousands of items, uh, devices, I should say. So it's it's a tremendous amount. We have identified, uh, we've done 800 um, things a year, and that's only about 30% from our estimation. The state has done 800, I should say. Uh, and. That's it's nothing really. It's just the tip of the iceberg. What what about you, your department doing the billing for providing that service? Is that offset the cost? It has, and, and to the benefit, what we have the power of by ordinance is like the mall, um, for example, not to pick on the mall, but if they've had inspections done by the state and we just got the information, we'd send the bills out. None of them would ever get paid, but then we would tell them, well, we're sorry, but we can't issue you a permit until you pay these bills. And that has brought in a tremendous amount of back, a backlog on, on those services that we already paid for. So they, I haven't been able to look, uh, everything's in delay with the processing of receipts, but we're close to covering the cost that we paid uh, we did lose out on a few years before I was um, I picked this stuff up, but the idea is it'll pay for itself. So when we get somebody in, we're going to have to tweak everything and uh, get the inspections done that are required, provide the services, and may have to revisit the council with the fee structure. Um, I think the most important thing, one thing to remember, is this is also they're mandated. They're mandated. So even this morning I had a request for a, a new marijuana scale. All these marijuana businesses aren't getting anything from the CCC until we seal them. So you're, these businesses will be shut down. Um, they won't be able to operate. And n again, this is not, hey, you gotta do this this way with this MOA, but the city's gotta do something one way or another. Uh, it, it's all the inspections that, that are uh, businesses that were open last year, they're good until the end of the calendar year. So our state uh, service covered us until June. And if they were already in business before June, they presumably got their inspection, they're good till December 31st. But all these businesses that are looking since July 1st are on hold until we get a sealer. 
And Damien, my, my last question, and um, to I turn it over to the committee is, and this, this is just my memory, but correct me if I'm wrong, our last actual sealer of weights and measures didn't retire, didn't resign. I think Mayor Morris cut the budget for the position. Oh, no, I, I think, I mean, I don't know for a fact. I'll, I'll be the first to say that, but um, he, if he didn't retire, he probably ought to. Uh, it, I think he, he was done. He was only uh, part-time at the end, but the budget did get cut after that. So maybe Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Jardine. Okay, Damien, so we don't have a sealer right now. We're in the market to get one. We have no sealer. That's that's accurate. Okay. And we're in the market to get one. It's not in the budget. Well, I, I think um, I'll be careful what I say there. There's a, It was part of the supplemental budget, so now we have funding. There's the funding to hire a full-time, and that was based on the research I did. There's no job advertisement. There's no job description solidified. Okay. That's, you know, that's where I was asked to do that. And I said, that's where I'm going to have to decline any further. You know, I, I, okay. I have my base job duties to take care of, and this is just a little too much. Right. Perfectly reasonable response. Um, my question is, just so I understand what, because I'm slowly forming an opinion on this proposal here, but you're being asked to be the sealer effectively do these inspections and that's why they want to give you an extra seven thousand dollars no we would not that it's it's by the research it needs to be a full-time position so with many conversations um in meetings and everything else i had consultations with folks in the professional world they were all in agreement that this needs to be a full-time position so okay. we need, my role would be management of of well first getting the program fully up and running again beyond what i've already done and then they would live in our office we're going to manage them as an employee we do have a lack of equipment that's a huge thing that we're going to have to budget for and figure out probably ask for grant money uh to start that up again uh, you know, so there's a number of things but not what? perform no oh. okay so why don't we get this person on board and have them do this work and we save this 7,000 and put it towards those costs? I mean, I don't understand why. I mean, you've already got all your other stuff that you have to do and apparently are at wit's end to get it all done. Um, I don't understand what the justification for this 7,000 because it doesn't seem like they should be putting this on you anyways it seems like they should have this person make them accountable for their work and end of story right and then if if there's an issue about you have to manage the employee um that's going to be uh what to do their annual evaluation which I, my understanding around here is we don't even do annual evaluations so we don't have that problem to contend with so i guess what i'm trying to get at is why don't we just get this person on board end of story i mean we need what i would like to give you a pay raise for is if we could demonstrate that your department, as we discussed, and by the way, uh, we apologize because this apparently got into a combined thing was that zoning official and this, and all we ever talked about at the last finance meeting was the zoning official stuff. We, we totally all missed this, this other issue about a pay raise. And my, my take on this is don't give you these additional duties but give you what resources you need. We want to hire whoever we need to hire to get all these inspections done in town and get that going. And by the way, if you can turn the department around and get these additional people and get this backlog of, of, of complaints and concerns, I think that would be meritorious for you to get a pay raise. Um, but to give you a pay raise to take on supervising this when you don't have any free time anyways. 
right? If, if the glass is already full, there's no time left now to go and supervise the sealer of weight and measures and do all this other stuff. We need the building commissioner doing inspections and doing all your building commissioner work because as I articulated at the last meeting, all we get is nothing but complaints. I would say the number one complaint about department I hear about from constituents is the building department. Because of the fact, not that you guys are bad, it's just that it sounds like it's, it's you're overwhelmed or you don't have enough resources and people are getting turned away. They're told, maybe we'll get to you. You're 150th on the list. We'll get back to you at some other point. If you don't like it, well, you might have to just go hire your own lawyer and da 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 da, and all these other types of things that I'm getting these type of feedback. I don't know if others are, but I'm certainly getting these kinds of feedbacks from constituents. And it's, it is concerning. And I want that turned around. And if you could turn that around, um, and really bring it in terms of filling the positions and getting this thing functioning again, um, that would be definitely worthy of a pay raise um, uh, for you. Um, and I, I would like to see what the salary history is in terms of what you started at. I think we should get it articulated out, like what you've received for increases over the period of time. I think some of that history would be helpful for the committee to consider also. But we need to have a plan, a plan from you as the department head as to, we're turning this department around and we're going to get these positions filled. Uh, I know at the last meeting you said that you've been working, trying for three years to fill some of these positions. And the question is now, well, what more resources do we need to support you to do that? Because we either need to get personnel on the ball, uh, we need to get a headhunter uh, or recruiting services or something or whatever we need to do. But failure is not an option because I'm also concerned about the fact when you hear in these tribulations we're reading about in the paper now related to this young lady who passed away at a, a marijuana facility and they're talking about there's nobody doing inspections, there's uh, respirators aren't being used, all these type of accusations and different innuendo are flying around there and we're taking on all of these licenses, we're, we're bragging to ourselves about how much cannabis impact money sitting out there, we've got three million in the bank and look at us, we're doing great. Well, how about we make sure we're holding these people that are coming in here in the droves for licenses. We have these conditions. Who the hell is monitoring all this stuff? You've got a whole industry uh, that has come into town and where are all these inspections going on? You don't, you barely have enough resources um, um, based on what you've told us to do what you're doing now. So we need that fixed. We need a, we need a management plan to turn this whole situation around um, because to me it sounds like we have an overwhelmed department head with lots of vacancies, too much work, not enough manpower, and we don't have, and all we're talking about is giving people pay raises. How about we fix the problem? When the problem's fixed, then we give rewards. How about we get the ball in the end zone, then we put seven points on the, on the scoreboard? That would be my friendly suggestion. It, does that sound unreasonable, what I'm suggesting? Because we need to support you, because it sounds like listening to you the last time, you, you feel very frustrated, you feel like this isn't getting better, so either we need to help you, or coach up the situation, or I, I, I don't know what the plan is, but current state is not working. You know, it, it there just doesn't seem like things are going around. I mean, I, I won't even get into all the anecdotals, but basically, you know, you have people saying, hey, there's a business running next door to my house. We can't get to it. We're, we have all this other stuff and there's priorities. And what's that? I think there's only you and Kevin Lagamunia, right? Doing, doing what you're doing. So we need to fix that. That, that seems to be priority one here, right? I don't know if you want to weigh in on any of that or just absorb what I said, but um, I just think that asking you to do more, it's not about the money. It's about layering more work that on a person that already has gazillions of bits of work. 
it's not an issue to me of giving more money. To me, it's an issue of how about having a functioning department, which by I think you would agree it's not functioning the way you would like it to function. I, is, I, I, think that's, I think we're all in agreement there, right? So that's where we really need, and I know we made that change at the last meeting that you wanted. Um, so hopefully that helps you. Um, you know, you're, what you're doing there is critically important to our success. So I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there any other discussion? Councillor Barley? Uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah, I just want to, want to point out the, the funds that we put in. Well, well, maybe the chair can just advise me. I, I mean, I know we have the supplemental budget here with sealer of weights and measures and the mayor's supplemental is for $60,000. And I know we approved that, so I'm just wondering what, this, what the status is of, so we budgeted, are we in the process of hiring somebody to fill that position? That, that's, I think that question is on everybody's mind here, Councilor Bartley, and I, I'm glad you brought it up. Um, you know, Mr. Cody is here for obvious reasons. If his department takes it over, there's an MOA in front of us and a transfer. The mayor came in, and the, I wish the mayor was still here, but the mayor has a school committee meeting. He apologized, but there's some stuff on the agenda. He really wanted to be present for the school committee. So we don't have the mayor in front of us to answer those good questions. Well, well, can, well, can, can we'll just do the chair to, to Damon. Damon, do you know what the status is of this? Uh, it's all on hold. So um, the thing is, there's there's nobody to to get this going. Uh, I've been the only one really working on it for the last few years. So um, it's there's no advertisement. There's no job description solidified. I I can I'm happy to work on that with the uh, city solicitor and continue on with that with all the work that I've done towards this program for the last few years. Yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to keep doing my uh, I'm not going to work on the weekends and after hours anymore for. Well, it's already far less than you know what I ought to be getting paid for all the the work that's been done. But you know, I respect everybody's opinion, and and again, I, I started saying at the beginning of this, uh, if if this is seen as a pay raise, well, you might as well kill it now because nobody's asking for a raise. I, I haven't gotten a raise. Um, if if it's considered as oh, we're going to compensate you for the for this work that you've done and you will do, you know, then that's something else. But. I have no no dog in the fight. I'm happy where I'm at. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, it's not news that I'm not going to be probably sticking around too much longer in the city anyway. Because it, it's just not it's uh, not going to grow too far. But you're not going to find somebody else to come in that's going to take on an office of ten people um, at an entry level or below entry level wage. So if it's not in if it's not solidified in MOA. This work can't live in the building department. So we need to start the conversation of what department. Do you want the sealer to live in? Um, it's not just the person going out and doing inspections. You'd be woefully misinformed to think that this is just something that will maybe be an annual or lack thereof review of an employee. And by the way, in the building department, we do one for everybody every six months and have since I started. So that's me, can't speak for anyone else. But anyhow, you're gonna to have to find another department for this to live in and somebody that's willing to take on the work, the clerical work, the enforcement work, all of the, uh, the intertwined work with code enforcement. So it is, it's not advertised, we have nobody. Councilor Bradley. Yeah, yeah just, just a comment to, to the committee. Uh, thank you, Damien, I appreciate the input, I, I really do. Uh, just if I could for just to the chair and to the committee my, my two cents is as follows because if the chair remembers um, we had a meeting with I think it was in DGR I, either I chaired it or was on, I was on the committee I just can't remember now with the sealer from Chicopee who was just wonderful with, the, with his time so I feel like I, I mean I can certainly pitch in and contact the city of Chicopee's sealer who was like I said a wonderful gentleman and, and perhaps find out from that person what the, what the job description is. I can at least do that, that minimum. Second off, I would ask the chair uh, to consider maybe talking to the mayor about this, because I hear what the building commissioner said. It almost feels like this should be in, in the building commission, but it could also be in another department, such as the, the police department. I, I don't see why that couldn't be part of that that, that, that department as well as because of the, um, you know, so many things you're involved with. Um, it, it seems like it would it would maybe not be the best fit, 
but it, it might be it might be a good fit for the uh, for for them. Then um, then I would I would hope, and I don't know if the chair has any thoughts on this. Is is that we have got to get an update on on the procurement office. I mean, where are we with, where are we with filling that 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 role as well? I mean, I, I haven't. I just know we have the person leave us and. Uh, okay, well, uh, allegedly somebody's coming. Okay, well, that's 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 good news. At least at least we have some some fresh information. Yeah, some fresh information. But um, I mean, I, I'm happy in my own small way to to try to help out and. And I, I don't remember what happened to the to the prior uh, weights and measures. He was definitely part time, yeah. and uh, whatever happened happened. But the, we want to thank the state for sure, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, but we, it's about time we, you know, we either did this on our own with a, with an employee, or we we found a, a third party vendor who could do it within that sixty thousand dollar budget. And uh, I wouldn't doubt that there's somebody out there that could do it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bartley. Um, I know those weren't questions, but they certainly were uh, good, good, uh, good points. And, and here's what the what the chair thinks, and I'll see what the committee thinks. Um, Damian, first of all, thank you for picking up the ball here. I know we've talked about this before. I know you've been before us before, and we appreciate it. And and I know I can speak for a lot of people. Appreciate the work you do with uh, with what you have. It's it's sometimes incredible. Um, we've already said it. This is a very important uh, position within the city. Uh, and, and it's growing with the with the marijuana industry and uh, we certainly want to make sure we do the right thing so here's my thoughts is one is we can't act on on putting it under the building commissioner's umbrella until we know where the mayor's going with the new with the new position we got to know what the new position is which I think is part of what you said Damien and part of what Councillor Bartley said is maybe we can get and probably we should be by uh, by ordinance because uh, this will be my final thought after I say this because we need to establish a, a job description if this is not going to be established by the professional union, which if it, it's a position that comes under the building commissioner, it, not, it wouldn't be a, a profession established by um, the collective bargaining. It would be established by ordinance with the mayor and the city council agreeing. So I think we have some dots that we have to, uh, we have to connect here before we can make a decision. Does it belong with the building commissioner? Uh, Maybe, but we got to find out what it is first. And and two, um, you know, where's the mayor stand on this? And I, I have a feeling finance meeting on Mondays is going to become a problem if, uh, <laughs> if yeah, I pick yeah. the same Monday. I, I, the only reason I picked this Monday was which ran us into the school committees because last Monday was a holiday. All oh, right. right, um, right. So it, it happens, and uh, I, I thought we'd be okay, but I'll, I'll take the blame there, not the mayor. But any other questions, Councillor Tomlin? Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Damien, for coming down and explaining this. And I, and I, I understand the situation uh, that you're in and under, really respect Councillor Jordan. And it almost seems like you've been doing this work for a while under your set pay. It almost seems like, you know, he didn't get it. He didn't get the salary, the money he was should have been getting. I mean, coming this way, I don't know if it's the right way, but my, my real big concern is who's doing it now or who's going to be doing it if you're not doing it until we get somebody, and we already had July, August, September, and half of October gone, um, how many scales and how many gas stations and how many department stores aren't being done and how much revenue is being lost? And as Councilor Jordan stated with the, um, you know, with, the, with the death at the cannabis facility, I mean, we have a lot of those. And, and you know, I, I want to get this job filled, but I understand your situation. You were the last couple of years doing the work, it almost seems unfair that you didn't get compensated for doing that work. You know, and I understand what this is, but it's uh, um, it's difficult, I think, to come and say, okay, we're going to pay you that extra money, and then once we get somebody in, now do we take some of that money back? It's it's almost like it's already gone by, and 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 I appreciate the work, and I just like anybody, I, I think on on this committee or anybody in the city doesn't want to lose anybody. Especially a department head, and 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 I, we do know that the rate is lower in most communities, which you're getting paid for. Um, and and I, I think we have to to fill that to put these these positions in the department to sort of get things going. But um, you know that that's my thoughts. I, I it's hard to say you, you're going to get this increase, and I, I think most of my colleagues feel that way. Although I I think you're you're duly not getting compensated 
for the work you've already done in the last two and a half to three years. Um, but I think um, to get this position going, if we have to contract it out to somebody, uh, as Councilor Bartley stated, get somebody, get some information on the uh, weights and measures gentleman from Chicopee, maybe we can find something within the next month or two. But my real concern is who's going to be doing it if you're not doing it because, I, you know, why would you be doing it if you're not going to get compensated for it? So um, we got to get moving on this, I think. Right. I agree. Councilor Dre. Yeah, we got to get this thing pulled because even – He's not doing the inspections either way. So we, we need these inspections done. We need this position posted and, and get moving. But I think the best course of action here is table this. Let's think about this some more and get answers to some of these questions and really think this through. And if the bigger question is, you know, what's going on with this department and compensation, and we should have a whole plan around filling all these vacancies. Um, and if it's an issue of funding, then so be it. And if it means raises, then... Say so be it, but you know th this whole sealer weights and measures position. You know we're going to have to have that stand on its own weight to to come up with a solution. And this doesn't right now. We're we're missing so many dots. We can't even I, connect them. I agree. Yeah. Is there any? I'll make a discussion? motion to table eight and nine. Motion uh, made and second to table eight and nine for everything that's just been said. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So move. Damien, if you can hang on just for a quick quick couple of minutes. Um, can we do item 10 real quick? Yep. Motion to take item number 10. Motion to take, to take item 10 off the table for discussion. All those in favor? Any right. opposed? This is the MOA that we did not have at the last finance committee meeting okay. when we discussed the zoning officer. Okay. Amy, we passed the transfer and agreed to this MOA at the last city council meeting. So this came into committee so we would have a copy of it if there are any questions, but I think all the questions have been answered. So we'll just make a motion to be received? Received and kept in our archives. Okay. Second. Motion to receive and keep it in the archives. Yep. And then the next next item was the one we should have got rid of, but my mistake. This is the original transfer we had that was separated, taking the $55,000 on its own for the zoning officer, which we already adopted at the last city council meeting. And this $7,000 has now been replaced with what we just tabled. So we just got to return this back to yeah, the Yeah, motion auditor. to return this to the auditor. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? One more, Damien. This is for you, I think. Item 9. No. No. Nine. You mean eight, eight and nine 12? And oh, I'm sorry. I'm, item, item 12. 12. You motion to take item number 12 off the table. Sorry. Second. Thank you, Councilor. <laughs> uh, item 12 is a pay local inspector $10,000 transfer into other contracted services, 10000 Off the table, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Damien, I, I think we know, but could you, for everybody listening and for us, walk us through this? This is just to cover the, um, the contract that we have for filling services that normally our local uh, building officials would be doing. So... Uh, we have somebody now, I've had them trained over the last few weeks, and they're up and running, and they're part-time, so they're going to do a few inspections a week. And they're working on it per diem, or did you fill a position? No, we, we, we did not fill a position. Uh, we still have no applicants to that end. Uh, so we, they're, they're per diem, so they're, they, pay, they get paid per inspection, per office hour, things like that. Okay. Is there any other questions we've... I'm assuming we're billing for their work and stuff too, right? So this kind of pays for itself, I would assume, because we're getting paid for these inspections, right? We charge inspection fees, and then we're able to pay these folks. Is it comparable, like the amount we're paying for the inspections versus the amount we're paying for the inspections? Is that, are we covering, let's put this, is it at least a break even? Uh, it's historically a loss. So when we hire a third party contractor, we're losing money because that's the last ditch effort to get somebody to do the work in the department. So we have to, they make more money than we do, essentially. Do you, do you know um, how much we pay for an inspection versus how much we're charging for the inspection? Ballpark? I mean, of course I would know that, but it's, it's not so simple. There's no, we don't charge for inspection. We, we charge for a building permit fee and inspections and plan review and everything else is rolled into that. Um, the, what, would the that what would that be? Rolled into one, one lump sum and we traditionally make a profit at least since I started. So that's what the data will show. But in terms of when we hire somebody to fulfill inspections, 
uh, like for the years we had to have an electrical inspector come in, we would pay more to that per diem inspector than we would a full time. Okay, so back to my question. Um, how much do we pay this person to do an inspection and how much do we get in the permit fees on an average case? Just as a, for example. Uh, the cost per inspection for a, a local uh, certified building inspector is $50. Fifty dollars. Okay, yeah, so we pay this person fifty. Okay, so we're paying. So when we buy, when we pay ten grand, we're getting what is that? Two hundred inspections, roughly. Well, minus all the office time. Okay. Minus office time. Okay. Well, they get time for setting up the inspection, phone calls, dealing with software. So I would reduce that by half, and probably be at a hundred. Okay, so it's actually costing us 100 in inspection when you add the admin time in. Yeah, that could be one way to look at it. Not wildly accurate, but yeah. Well, 100 inspections for $10,000. That's my Hoyokai math, you know. Um, but okay, and how much, in, if, how much would 100 permits reap us in money? How much are we getting for a, uh, these permits that we're charging? Uh, anywhere between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, that sounds like a good deal. So we're we are making money. So we 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 are billing out fifty to a hundred grand, and we pay out ten grand. I like that. That's a ten to one ROI. Hmm. I usually buy stock in companies like that. Sounds great. I'll, I'll have talk. you speak next time. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> just encouraged. Do a better job, and hey, there's a guy with an MOA on your agenda. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's done that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, uh, with that, with the fact that we have a 10 to 1 ROI, I'm may, let me immediately make the motion to approve this. Second. Second. Motion made second that we adopt approval of the transfer. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Okay. Um, our conservation department, Yoni, is with us. And we're waiting for the treasurer, so why don't we go back two items, three, three and, and take them together? Or no? I think we can do them together. Yeah. Can I make a motion to go to three and four. Second. No, second motion man, second that we take up items three and four for discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Uh, with us, Yoni Glasgow, Glassover, sorry, is here. We have two grants. The uh, first, excuse me. Jeff, I hate paper clips. <laughs> He's a staple man. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> All right. The first item three: the grant is the Greening Gateway Cities <laughs> Partnership, twenty thousand dollars. No match. We're being asked to accept it, and the provisions for the ex accounting of the expenditures and any other resources connected. The second grant is the Greening Gate Gateways uh, Cities Implementation, hundred thousand dollar. No match. Same, uh, same request. Uh, off the table, we now have Yoni with us. Yoni, thank you and welcome. Can you walk us through each of these if you need to separate them or if you can do it together? Great. Absolutely, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it's pretty easy to talk about these together. They're grants from the same office that are funding basically the same type of work. Um, they just offered it in two different separate grant applications that'll have to be managed and budgeted separately. But basically this is uh, the same version of the GGCP grant that we got in 2021 for tree pit improvements. Um, the goal of this grant program and why it exists is because of the DCR Greening the Gateway Cities program, which has been planting trees in Holyoke and other gateway cities um, around the Commonwealth. And what they found is, in order to reach their goal of 2,400 trees in each community, they found that it would really benefit their program and the communities they're working to offer um, funding to do tree pit improvements and open new growing space for more trees to be planted. So uh, we successfully got this grant in 2021, the $20,000 version. Now they have that option, they have that offering as well as a $100,000 implementation grant. So um, just real briefly, this is going to fund... Recording stopped. Oh, 
the recording stop. Thank you. Hold on one second. We just okay. have a little technical difficulty. Recording in progress. Oh, there we go. Back, back on. Back, back in action. The Wizard of Oz is quick on his feet. We okay. thank you, Jeff. The man behind the curtain over there. Okay, Yoni, you're all set. <laughs> Ready to go. Okay. So this grant can be used for stump removal. Um, we can remove impervious surface to either expand tree pits or create entirely new tree pits. Um, so I've been working with, and we can also do soil remediation and pay for some watering of the newly planted trees. Um, so I've been working with our city forester and city engineer to find sites around downtown Holyoke that would be suitable for these improvements. Um, we have a number of areas where there are stumps that are existing that if removed, a new tree could be planted there. Um, a lot of these are somewhat undersized. It's really ideal to create a, at least a four by eight foot tree pit to allow enough growing space for a mature tree to thrive. So in some cases, we'll be opening up the double sidewalk where we can maintain ADA accessibility and still have a good place to put a tree in. In other cases, we'll be removing stumps and improving the existing environment. Um, we think with these two uh, grants combined, we can do about 65 tree pits. Um, obviously, um, you know, different amounts of impervious surface removal, um, whether there's a, there's a stump in there or not, means each of these sites is going to vary in price. But that was the estimate that we put forth in the proposal. Um, and then the idea is once this work's completed, the DCR will be able to go in and plant these trees for the city free of cost. So we'll be also leveraging more benefit from that free program while it still exists. Fascinating, Yoni, thank you. Um, and, we, and we all know the importance of, uh, of uh, trees and, and, and what it does to the, uh, uh, I lost it. The environment, but what am I trying to say? The air quality, air quality. <laughs> urban, uh, urban scape, yeah, everything. Canopy. I mean, canopy, the canopy. canopy. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, any further discussion, Councillor Bartley? Uh, Want to go first, Kev? Councillor Jordan, first, uh, if it's okay. Yeah. Just uh, thank you, Yoni, uh, for doing this uh, and and working to make trees a priority in the city. It's very, very important. And uh, I just also want to give a kudo to DCR. They they do a f do fantastic work, and um, I know they partnered with the high school graduating class of 2022 to put a beautiful new tree at the entrance of Hoyoke High School, and. Um, that was just fantastic, and uh, they, that is a, just a gem, that, that program that they have of putting trees uh, in cities like Holyoke and really uh, just trying to beautify the community. So this is awesome that you guys are doing this. So just thank you for, for your work. Uh, obviously, it goes without saying, I'm thrilled to support it. Councilor Barley? Thank yeah, you. This, yeah, this is good news, just through the chair. Uh, Yoni, uh, who, who's gonna be doing the, uh, the, the tree stump? removal yeah we're going to be using the grant funds to hire our contractor um, we're going to probably roll these together into one bid so because of the price of 120,000 we'll have to put this out to bid and see who we get but we're hoping to have one contractor do all the work the stump removal the impervious surface removal tree watering um, yeah I, I can say for sure that there are Vendors and I know I know at least one in Ward Three for sure because he advertises pretty regularly. So there are Holyoke vendors that, that do this work. So my my hope and my fingers crossed is it'll be in the in the when it's out to bid we'll have some kind of local preference that that would be nice if you would uh, you would consider that and then certainly downtown area which you, you know we want to I mean High Street there are mayors years and years ago that that put asphalt in, in the tree pits for whatever reason I, I wasn't around at the time so I, I can't say but it's kind of a bizarre kind of a bizarre act to have done um, for sure it was a mayor and uh, you know, paved over tree pits in uh, on, on high street um, 
Uh, and and so, but there uh, there are other areas. There, there are there are probably other. Is, there's certainly you know m removing stumps is is a huge thing on on many of the tree lined streets in Elmwood. I can tell you that. But there are in the Highlands, uh, yeah. in in Oakdale. There, there's all sorts of areas that, that could that Springdale. There could all sorts of areas that could use some attention. So I'm not saying you got to divide it by seven. But it, it would be nice if there was some, some kind of equilibrium with, with this uh, equity, if you would, throughout the city. And then, uh, frankly, th this, is, this is one of the better grants that I can recall coming in because it's really going to have a, um, some really important utility for, for a lot of residents that, that really want to have trees in front of their homes and or proximate to their homes and they can't because of the, um, because of the situation at hand, okay, Yoni. So th this is this is great. Hopefully, you'll consider hiring local contractors, and uh, hopefully, we'll get this to be expanded. Because I think the need is going to you're going to see is is far greater than what we have right now. But this is a nice first step. Thank you, Councillor Bartley. Thank you, Councillor Common. Yeah, I just want to thank you, uh, Yoni, for the work you do with this uh, the greening of our city. You know, and it's it's, it's important to to continue this work and to get these grants um, to to really help out. And I, I'm really keen on uh, the, the, the stump grant, the stumps that we have in the city. And, and when they are done that, I know I had an individual, I think was up on uh, Linden Street that had their stump cleared out by the city and Forrester, but then they left a, you know, like a big hump. So, we, and, you know, when they do the stumps to, to, to clear them out and to try to level them off and maybe try to grow grass back in there. But, um, you know, anytime we can uh, get these kind of grants and these trees in our community uh, throughout the city is, is, a, is a big help. And I want to thank you for the work you do. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Anderson Burgles. It's worth saying. Yeah, I I wanted to make a point. So obviously, we all know that a tree fell on on my house, and currently there's a, a tree stump there. And I think it would be beneficial to either a completely remove the stump or um, plant new trees, um, because little by little on locust on my stretch of locust. Um, they're already marking another tree that's ready to fall. And while I've, the short 10 years I've lived there, several trees have already fallen and none of them have been replaced. So I'd hate for locusts to be a treeless street, if you will. Um, and, uh, and uh, anyways, I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Yeah. Joe. Councilor Jordan. Yeah, and, and Yoni, uh, Councilor Anderson Burgos is 100% correct. If, if you need additional funds or grants or whatever we can do on this stump grinding, that is a serious, I'm, I'm, again, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but this is an important issue because as trees fall, we need to be replacing them, you know, out there. And when we leave stumps, you know, the city did a pretty good job of putting these trees up umpteen years ago, but they've either lived their life or things happen with nature and such as it is. But now these are great locations to put trees, but now we're only left with stumps, so we're, we run out of a lot of the great prime spots to put new trees. So that reforestation of, of these areas and these tree belts, you know, we support that. So, you know, feel free to make that a priority in future asks. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I'm sure, obviously there's much greater need than the funding that's available through these grants yep. at the current moment. But we got to chip away at it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Any further discussion? I make a motion to be approved. Second. Motion made, second that we approve uh, both uh, both items, uh, both grants, accept them, and refer that recommendation to the full city council tomorrow evening. If there's no further discussion, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Yoni, thank you and great work. And uh, I, I love it when I'm driving down the street and seeing a lot of these trees and all the good stuff that's going on. Thank you for working. Thank you so much. As the councilor said, you know, it's great to have DCR doing their bit, but it's good to have you locally and uh, making sure it gets done correctly. Appreciate it. Thank you. One more item, gentlemen. Motion to take on number 13 off the table for discussion. Motion to second to take item 13 off the table introduced by Councilor Jordan, McGivern, and Tallman that the treasurer and Flynn Financial will please appear before the finance committee to discuss how our stabilization funds are being invested. The city council would also like receive, to receive quarterly financial statements of these investments going forward. In advance of these meetings, please provide the financial statements for uh, to July 1st, 2019 through July 30th, I'm sorry, July 30th, 2020, so we can be prepared for the meeting and discussion. Please also provide us any 
applicable uh, regulations or rules from the state related to how the stabilization funds may be invested. Uh, off the table for discussion, all those in favor and Aye. close. We have with us our newly appointed city treasurer, Rory Casey. We welcome you. Uh, Tanya, our auditor, is still with us. And Mr. Uh, Flynn, Tim Flynn of, of uh, Financial, who is not available this evening, but my understanding is that the upfront information has been forwarded and the treasurer, Rory, I know your, your feet are just getting wet, but I, I think you, there's a bunch of information <laughs> in this packet. If you care to begin something this evening or talk about it this evening, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thank you to the counselors who filed this order. Uh, certainly something uh, that we should be taking a very close look at, um, you know, historical as well as, you know, what we want to do in the future. Mm. Um, I would just uh, start off by saying that I've, I have spoken with uh, Mr. Flynn, and he looks forward to the opportunity to come in and talk with the council. He just wasn't able to make it this evening. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I would hope uh, whatever direction this conversation goes that uh, the uh, item could be tabled uh, to allow for him to come in in the future. Yep. Um, so what I've forwarded um, is a couple of things. Uh, first off, moving forward from here, uh, quarterly reporting, not a problem. Uh, we'll provide that to the council. Um, the order itself uh, talked about uh, Flynn Financial. I think it's also important to note that there are some other accounts um, with Peoples uh, right now where we have some uh, of what the city has it would consider stabilization funds. Um, so recently the council uh, voted to authorize the creation of a capital improvement stabilization mm -hmm. uh, fund. Um, you'll notice on one of the uh, balance sheets or the, the, at least the top page, you'll see some transfers out. Um, that was transferring money from our regular stabilization fund, which is with Flynn Financial, into People's uh, Bank. Uh, we also have cannabis, uh, what's considered a cannabis stabilization fund uh, there, uh, as well as ARPA funds, um, which are uh, all at People's. Uh, so what you have in front of you uh, is two documents. You have uh, some reports uh, from Flynn on three of the accounts that we have with them uh, currently. Um, and you have a uh, city of Holyoke investment policy, <clears throat> excuse me, um, which was uh, this particular one uh, is dated 2018. So predates my time in the office uh, in this role and uh, was executed by a former treasurer. I have done a little bit of research into this and this isn't something uh, unique to the city. This is this is a set of standard practices that a number of municipalities uh, use. Uh, the treasurers or treasurer collectors, depending on how their towns or cities are organized, use to invest funds. Um, there are a number of state laws uh, that uh, kind of dictate how these funds can be invested, the types of funds they can be invested in. Um, and so uh, I wanted to forward that as well. It's a 14, 12, 14 page document with some signature pages at the end. Uh, there's a lot to get into here. Um, and it's something that I'm reviewing uh, as well. One of the items towards the end of this document uh, is just a good operating practice for anything, which is a five year look back, five year review. Every five years you go and you take a look at who you're working with, uh, make sure they're doing right by you and uh, decide if you're going to move forward with them or you're going to make some changes. So that is where we're at right now. Um, it is something that I am reviewing. I've been in the office now for just over a month and am not in a rush to make any uh, big changes uh, as it relates to areas where our funds are secure. I would say at this moment our funds are 100% secure. Uh, in all the various accounts they're in. Um, so looking at whether it be the investments or other banking services uh, that the city employs, um, something that we are taking a look at uh, but haven't made any movement on as of yet and certainly something that I would 
welcome a conversation with uh, the council uh, on the direction we're going to head in the future. Thank you, uh, Rory. Um, before we get into Q&A, Tanya, did you want to add anything? No, I'm up and I thought you did a good job. Thank you. I'm sure the treasurer appreciates you saying that. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you, but I appreciate you being here. For, for uh, Now what we'll do is, uh, I think, Q&As and see what our next steps are. Councilor Jardine? Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, Rory, thank you so much for, um, first of all, welcome aboard. Congratulations again on your uh, new position and role. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to be right on top of things. And um, look forward to, number one, you know, um, I think it's fair to say I've been around for uh, a little while here and um, never was aware of Flynn Financial. Um, so, you know, I don't, we never received statements or any of this. So I think this new transparency, uh, just making sure we as counselors know where this is, you know, vitally important money is going. How, how long is Flynn Financial, to the extent you know these things yet, how long have they been with the city managing uh, this? Flynn, Flynn uh, Financial has had a relationship with the city for at least 20 years, if not longer. Really? Okay. Uh, yes. Um, the amount of money they uh, have of the city, you know, has, has, has fluctuated, but they have ap they've had a relationship with the city investing our funds for, for at least 20, if not wow. 25 years. Interesting. Um, you know, I don't think the council really, you know, I guess we just sort of, the treasurer did what the treasurer did, you know, all these years. And I think it's fair to say we, other than understanding they deposited these tax monies in an account and uh, we're growing them, we had no understanding that this was actually privately managed mm -hmm. and um, was being invested and, um, and how they're investing in. We've never, I think the treasurer, in my opinion, should have kind of come forward in the past and had that discussion with us. I mean, I, it's one of those things where you don't know what you don't know, so how do you know to even ask? Because that's like, how, do, how can, you know, as a treasurer, you can't say, well, Nobody ever asked me for these reports. Well, if I don't even know it exists, how can I even ask for something that I don't even know exists? No, at no time did a treasurer ever say, oh, by the way, here's the Flynn financial statement. Then it would, you know, then it would have sort of connected. Then you would have been, oh, who, who are these guys? I feel, you know, almost like, geez, you know, the, we're just now meeting whoever Mr. Flynn is, uh, you know, and in, 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 in having this conversation. But that's water over the dam, and um, we're here we are now. And it'll be good to go back and, and to get this uh, reporting and, and see how things are invested and talk about the investment policy. Obviously, just so we're all on the same page, you know, these, unlike the retirement board, which I did know, they do use a private investment and that's a long term it's almost like an endowment for a college or a large donor grant this is different though this is straight up tax money that is needable immediately we could say to you with the permission of the mayor next tuesday we want to spend 10 million dollars on x these monies have to be readily available to us mm -hmm. And the question gets into, is it? And what are the implications of that? And, you know, is there a disclosure about what Mr. Flynn's getting paid, you know, to provide all these services? What, what, do you know what Mr. Yeah. Flynn gets paid? I'm assuming uh, he's paid a commission as a percentage of this? Yeah, I mean, uh, with, with most financial advisors, there's, uh, a, you know, mm -hmm. set on basis points. I, I don't know the exact terms of this, and, and I would also say that there's three different accounts here, and uh, there could be different terms for each account depending on the type of product okay. uh, where you're in, investing. Uh, but to answer your first point, as far as liquidity uh, is concerned, um, you know, I would I feel very comfortable to say in a scenario in which the mayor authorized uh, a transfer of funds and it was approved by the council mm -hmm. uh, that we would be able to turn that around very quickly. And we just saw that recently with the uh, transfer uh, from these accounts into people's uh, to fund the stabilization, um, you know, okay. account there. 
Well, for example, say um, just this one particular account, say Councillor Anderson Burgos and I in January when we first came in, we'd said, we'd like to spend $11.2 million on something. Well, you look seven months later, 1.4 million of it's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, are we, how are we investing these monies that they're, yep. I mean, I just hope nobody picks Enron, <laughs> you know, because, <laughs> um, you know, now it's goodbye money. And I just don't know if people realize that this is, they're, they're rolling the dice in the stock market with our money here. Yeah, and so I think- For that, tax money. No, you know? absolutely. And, and I think that, uh, you know, as I, I've said, uh, before and I've, I've said to you uh, privately and, and of course uh, you know when I was being interviewed by the council that um, you know where we invest our money protecting our money is is one of the most important jobs of the treasurer absolutely right? um, so you know a few things I, I, I see that too and I, I see some sticker shock a, a million dollars of that discrepancy here was the money transferred um, uh, from from this account okay. to the people's account, but your point is well taken. So four hundred thousand. Yeah, your yeah. your point is well taken. Um, and I would point to um, the various sections of state law uh, that are very clear. There are specific types of funds uh, that we can uh, invest in mm. as a municipality. Mm. Uh, the retirement board has a separate set of right. uh, policies exactly. that are, are, you know, in fact, I believe that they have more liberty to invest in different types of uh, funds yes. uh, than municipalities do for these types of trusts and stabilization accounts. Um, so in my mind, uh, we need to take a look at not just the short term and, you know, anybody that invests any, any kind of money needs to take a long-term view, right? We're not day trading here. Right. And I would never, ever be open to any type of, uh, you know, scheme where we're just moving money around for the quick buck, right? right because right. Uh, if nothing else, the reconciliation nightmares uh, that that will produce and, and some of those, uh, you know, we, we're already dealing with enough reconciliation issues. Um, so I would point to the state law. Um, I would point to the investment policy. I am not, uh, and I, I've never uh, pretended to be an expert mm -hmm. on, on these things, uh, whether or not we were investing uh, with a firm, I would say that the city should have, uh, you know, seek the advice and counsel of a third party. Um, you know, obviously there's a financial implication to that. Anytime we right. contract, anytime we have a vendor, we're going to be paying them. Um, and, and so, yeah, I mean, if it was not Flynn, it would be somebody else. If mm -hmm. it was, you know, you know, we've had different folks, whether it's been with Mass Mutual in the past or Bank of America had a piece of the money, a company called Bartholomew had a piece of the money. There's lots of different uh, ways this money has been invested over the years. Um, it, you know, it has been uh, a, a portion of it is centralized right now with Flynn. Um, but that isn't to say, in fact, the bulk of our money uh, sits in other accounts, mostly with people's. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, moving forward, because uh, that's all I can be responsible course, for is what we're moving forward. Right. I'm, I'm happy to be not just, you know, be responsive uh, and give you what you ask for, um, you know, as long as, you know, within accordance with any well, kind of disclosure. Of course. Paperwork, yeah. but uh, come up with uh, more regular communications with the council. We, um, we appreciate You know, to provide that, that kind of uh, level of, of insight into what we're doing down in the treasurer's office because I do think there's a lot of misunderstanding about the role of mm -hmm. that office, what it means to the city, and the complexities that exist within that office. Yep. Um, and I think it's important for not just the council but the general public who are listening right now and your constituents to have a full understanding of what it is that office does, um, right. what we're doing with that money, and what we're doing to protect it. Right, ab absolutely. So um, couldn't agree more. I think that's very eloquent and right on point is, you know, we want to understand what's going on here. You know, the other thing, again, as I pointed out, the retirement board has a different set of rules because no one is ever, that's like an annuity. Uh, it's designed to grow over a long-term investment that's going to be here decades and decades and decades and decades to make sure that we have the money 
to have so much in bonds, so much in stocks and this to be able to make the monthly payments to the retirees. Whereas this is something that we in this room, the mayor, us, you, you know, we could say we want to spend this. And the question is, is the money still there? And, you know, we it, it's and now I guess it goes into, well, how is the general fund? I, I'm assuming that the general fund isn't being invested like this. No, no, no. no the this, general fund money is not correct. That's sitting in a bank, in a account, bank account to, to pay yeah. payroll and and otherwise. Yeah. But it does get into, you know, we never real. At least I never realized. Sure. I can only speak yeah. for myself, but I'm assuming nobody else. I have yet to meet anybody here that has heard of Flint Financial or the stabilization. We just sort of thought it was in an account, and there you go. But we're we're learning, and um, you know, we'll we'll figure this out as to how do we have it conservative, but have it liquid, Absolutely. and because um, you know these these type of tax accounts. The other thing that I wanted to point out that raises another red flag to me is when you invest like privately if you have your own 401k or whatever when things are going great in the stock market or the general economy and you're getting these tremendous returns it's the lowest least likely time you're actually going to need the money mm -hmm. but when everything is crapping out and you're running out of money like you know Holyoke you know we're not exactly loaded here so when when the things are down like right now the stock market is down like 20 percent and um that's probably when state receipts are going to be down now you know our state happens to be in a, in a nice time coming off of being a flush with a lot of federal money and otherwise but it's sort of a weird way we got the the arpa money and different things but typically speaking when things are down that's when you would be most vulnerable to have to draw on these funds, which would be the worst time if you're investing in the stock market to take money out because if the stock market's down, you're locking in your losses. And it's like the one thing they tell you is don't sell low, right? I yep. mean, just hang on because eventually it's going to come back up. But when these type of accounts are so sensitive, they're not really designed for really the long term. You need that balance between conservatism and, and liquidity. And um, you really can't lose principle. Mm -hmm. And and I guess that's obviously I'm just, you know, you were kind enough to send this all over at 430. So I will be sure to pour through all this and absolutely agree we should table this, begin a conversation. Um, working with you i trust your judgment um on this in terms of a lot of these other different accounts and and as you learn more you know about the rules you know um with the state and are there other cities that you know um have and flynn i understand they're in new york state i guess you know so you know how often is this relationship mm -hmm. is this rebid out every five years or how how does that work uh, again you're still new so you're probably getting this background in history but you know do you know how long they've been managing these accounts or well like like i said flynn flynn's had business with the city uh, they've managed i, I can't say a hundred percent of these funds okay um you know since they've been here but they've been here for at least 20 25 right. plus years um you know, I I uh, have uh, no allegiance to anybody but the residents of, right. of Holyoke that I serve in, and you do as well. I would just say that you know, uh, Mr. Flynn's from the city, um, oh, and okay. yeah, and and does have investments with other uh, folks. I know for a period of time I was working for the uh, Sisters of Providence. He okay. has some investments on their behalf. Some other okay. uh, firms in the city. Um, yeah, or nonprofits he manages their investments as well so he's not unknown uh to us he's not just sure. some, somebody from wall street that of course you know, came up but at the end of the day uh, i stand by my first statement which is i have no allegiance to anybody right um except the citizens, citizens of the holyoke exactly so. yeah and um because i also understand he's uh either attempting to develop either already has with the G&E and the water department to do similar type of work. So, you know, uh, however this is, and, and I don't mean in any way, I have to get to know him. I haven't yeah. formed any opinion. I, I don't know anything about Flynn Financial. All I know is what I don't know. Yep. And, and that thus far is it just amazing to me that 
a person this important to the city is not known to the city council and is actually overseeing very critically important funds of ours. Yeah. And I'm a little disappointed that Mr. Flynn wouldn't have realized that these are types of reports that these type of conversations, but again, maybe he just answered to the treasurers and su such as it was. So he figured not his opportunity to, or his responsibility to deal with that. So um, look forward to beginning the conversation and um, thank you for getting us the, the, the funds going forward. When he comes back, I guess we'll get into, you know, all these different types of investments that we have. And, and if you can look at this mm -hmm. and do your own review to see if we're in compliance with all the state rules, and then are we in compliance with just general common sense yep. and good judgment um, that w I would really be interested for you to weigh in on all this, Absolutely. you know, because you're the key guy yep. in, in all of this. So, okay, great. Thank, thank you so much, Happy Rory, you, and, and look forward to it. Yep. Thank you. Councilor Anderson Burgos. Yeah, it's not, it's not much of a question, more of a statement. Um, I come from a financial background anyway, so the first thing I saw and this is not to say that Flynn Financial is by any means, you know, uh, a bad company or anything like that. It has no reflection on Flynn Financial except other than my experience as a financial advisor. And what I saw was 25 years. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? So he, he, as, a, as a city council, right, and the mayor and the treasurer, we need to be better. We need to work together because... We need to know this. This is 25 years of a relationship we we had no idea existed. And I know when I was um, given advice financially, I would say, you need to make sure that every five to 10 years, maximum 10, minimum five, right, that you have a second set of eyes on your finances. And so when I saw the 25 years, I was like, You've got to be kidding me. So the, I just wanted to make that statement. We got to get better than this. We definitely do. And thank you so much for for bringing this all to us. Thank you. Councilor Domond? Yeah, I'll just just be brief. I really want to I appreciate you coming down and, and showing us this information and getting this sort of today. I got a late. I went down to the. Uh, the, the investment policy because I was really concerned about how you know where can we put our funds and how do how does this work and, I, and everything is regulated and and to get these different um, the funds to see of course it was a tough year you know of course it, things went down I yeah. everybody that has any kind of investment or 401k or or stocks or bonds have lost money um, but I think this is the beginning of a a relationship with Flynn Financial and and uh, working together with the council the finance committee the treasurer the mayor to see you know, where our dollars are going and how we can maybe do better uh, on, on, a, on a yearly basis. And um, uh, I'm glad that this was brought up by my colleagues, uh, Councilor Dick Jordan and Councilor McGivern, because uh, I never realized how, where the money was going, where the money is invested. And um, you, know, there, you hear stuff about the uh, retirement board and where that money is going um, and how much the city puts towards that every year and how you know, we used to get regular reports from the retirement board, how our our um, funds are doing, um, but this is a this is a good start, and I'm um, looking forward to reading through these and and looking forward to hear from uh, from Mr. F Mr. Flynn in the future and how can we uh, better protect our our cash flow in, in the city of Hoyoke. So thank you for the work you've done Absolutely. getting this to us, and looking forward to the, the future conversations. Councilor Bogle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just got a quick question. I'm trying to understand the, I'm looking at stabilization account number one. Yep. From, from July to August, is, did you say there was a transfer to People's Bank or, or was that a, a net loss or? Nope, there was a transfer of a million okay. dollars approved by the council uh, and the mayor um, from uh, stabilization, which is this account, to People's Bank Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. Thank you. Thank you. And um, if, if I could, <clears throat> just by, not, not, I don't want to say full disclosure, but certainly by uh, the importance of, uh, of the reasons why I signed on to this order, but the importance of what I think, you know, the city council is looking for. First of all, 
Congratulations, Mr. Treasurer. Thank you. I take it you were sworn in by the city clerk. I was. And now via vote of the city council, you are a quasi-elected person. <laughs> elected person that is solely responsible for these funds, mm -hmm. which is the way we've done business for many years, the way I believe the founding fathers of this city set it up as checks and balance. You work with the mayor, the mayor can't tell you what to do, although you know he's an important person. Mm -hmm. I know you work with the city council and we can't tell you what to do, although I think you see us as an important body. I hope so. But that's, uh, I'll stop as far as that goes. Congratulations again. Um, by, by full disclosure, I, I, I coached Tim Flynn in basketball at the YMCA, so I know who Tim Flynn is. I, I can't fully define Flynn Associates, but I know he's worked primarily out of New York. I know he's done work in Massachusetts. I know he's done work for the city, and more important, I know a number of the non-for-profits he works for, and uh, certainly commend him for, you know, his, his talents aren't just uh, lost on his home city, but he spreads them probably throughout New England and probably into New York State, obviously. Um, and that's not why I signed on to, on to the order. What I didn't know up until maybe sometime this past year, two years, is our original stabilization fund was divided into two funds and was being invested, as you stated eloquently tonight, in different matters. And I didn't know, I know what the capital, because we, we approved the transfer to get the, and I commend Mayor Garcia for the establishment of the capital stabilization fund. And I, and I appreciate you pointing out the cannabis money and, and the uh, impact money, I believe, is what you were referring to. But there are, correct, or not, help me, Rory, if you would. There's three accounts, um, there's two stabilizations, original accounts. Yes. I mean, if we, we, normally when it's reported to us, we always saw one dollar figure and we yes. saw how much it grew each year. So we had reports over the years, but not, as Councilor Jardine said, you know, any in detailed um, analysis of how and why that fund was growing. We always knew it could be invested. I've talked to the auditor about this. I talked to the former auditor about this. The state governs this, not like an annuity, I agree with Councilor Jardin, but they do govern the type of investments you can do with this. And it's not a, it's not a free for all by no means. Um, so in people's, what money do we have in people's or how many accounts do we have in people's? How many accounts do we have? <laughs> well, <laughs> of, of, of what, I, what I can tell you is this, that as it stands today, the city maintains my, the treasurer's office uh, maintains 45 different bank accounts. That is going to change. That number is going to go down. That doesn't mean the money's going away. Right. Um, when we uh, talk about some of the reconciliation issues that we've mm -hmm. seen pop up on the audit time and time again, um, it's, it's a direct result of this model of having so many different bank accounts, okay? Um, or at least that's a part of, part of it. So once we... Uh, you know, we're working with Mass MuniFin, uh, as the council knows again, uh, you know, and, and to your point, uh, Council McGivern, I view it as a partnership, right? Um, mm -hmm. Along with, you know, all the various uh, uh, elected folks in the city. Um, the uh, Mass MuniFin uh, is helping us work on a lot of the past reconciliation issues. Once that's done, I've already uh, let the mayor know. I'm, I'm letting the council know now and would be in touch uh, once we do this, but we're going to reduce that number down. That's too many bank accounts. It, it just is too many bank accounts. Um, so right now with Peoples, uh, we have uh, about 35 of those bank accounts are with Peoples. Um, some of those, uh, you know, without getting into all the, the flow of it, um, because we're still trying to figure out the flow of it all. Um, uh, that's, that's what we have with Peoples right now. Um, those bank accounts uh, have balances of anywhere between um, a few dollars because they're what's considered a sweep account where money goes in, gains a little interest, sweeps right back out again. Uh, when interest rates were at 5%, 
that made a lot of sense. When interest rates are at 0.35%, it makes a little less sense. Um, so so the at, all the way up to millions of dollars that you can imagine that we would have in bank accounts. Um, so that's what we have with people's right now. Um, you know, whether they're mar money market accounts, regular checking accounts, uh, it's, it's a whole variety uh, that we have with people's merchant accounts, uh, which are for credit card processing in and out. Um, I've already let people's know that we're gonna have that conversation. Uh, we're looking at some other models from other communities that are similarly sized to us uh, and how they uh, organize their bank accounts. Uh, and you know, we're gonna find out what works best for our city and that's what we're gonna put into place here. And if we looked at rainy day fund stabilization yes. on its own, yes, is where is all that money? Right now, uh, just what what is called the rainy day yeah. fund, the stabilization <laughs> fund that the council created back in the early '90s, I believe, um, that exists with Flynn right now. Okay. That that's with Flynn Financial at the moment. And that's made up of the two accounts titled stabilization. The third account that you have here that's labeled trust, uh, those are trust funds uh, almost entirely related uh, to school um, scholarship uh, activities. We learned about that too because some of those are running a deficit and we got dinged by the uh Yes. The uh, D Division of Local Services. And I, I said, how can we get dinged for scholarship money donated by alumni? Yep. And then I found out because we invest it, which, which isn't a bad thing. But when it's not reconciled properly, that is exactly it becomes right. a bad thing. Uh, you sure you want this, Rory? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask me that at my interview. No. <laughs> you know, I almost did. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you. And a lot of information to digest. Councilor Jardine? Yeah. Um, again, as we peel the onion back, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe a statement of um, all the accounts. You know, once you kind of whittle it down, you know, to this 35 and if there's others at other banks. But um, so we have, and then you said now at Peoples, we have one for the marijuana and mm -hmm. we have one for capital, right? So now we have four stabilization accounts. Well, I, I, the capital stabilization account um, is a stabilization account created by the council. I mean, yep. there's, there, and, and Councilor McGivens, right, I, I should have said impact fee rather than stabilization. On a sheet somewhere, it's written stabilization. Okay. He's absolutely right. You know, what's really important about the terms that we use when we say stabilization and then you look at the mass general law mm -hmm. it's very clear on how we can invest that money and what can be done with that money and then mm -hmm. the council mm -hmm. uh, has also put uh, limits on how that money can be authorized right mm -hmm. whether it's two-thirds vote or a simple majority or right. so on and so forth what can it be used for what do the rating agencies look at are the rating agencies just looking at our regular bank accounts not necessarily but they're absolutely looking at the performance of our stabilization accounts. And as I know, we all have over the years reviewed those reports from Moody's or Standards and Poor's. Mm -hmm. More often than not, anytime they've affirmed our rating, they've pointed to the fact that we have this healthy stabilization fund that we could fall back on in those you know dire situations. Exactly, yep. Okay, so we have these two new ones, and then we have stable one that's marked Stabilization 2, which has approximately $5 million on yep. it. And then you said this one here, which is called Strategic Wealth Management. What is the purpose of that? That's the scholarship account? So there's, if you, if you actually look, I think what would be easiest is if you look at the address, um, you can see ones called Stabilization Funds one's stabilization account A, and then one is trust fund. Um, those, those would be, if you look at the, the address from the actual statements themselves, mm -hmm. yeah, right up at the top, you can see that. Oh, okay, account A corporation. Yep, so at, yes, at the top of that, it does say uh, account strategic wealth management two. That is the trust funds, that is 
where our uh, scholarship funds are currently. Scholarship, yep. okay. And I will say that, you know, the auditor's office uh, is working on a project right now to help reconcile all of those accounts. Uh, we've been getting them all the information they need and, you know, uh, we're getting all that sorted out as well. Because behind that, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of different scholarships. Oh, sure, you know. sure. I just want to make sure I'm reading the financial statement correctly, though. Yep. Um, it says inflow, $1 million, and then outflow was $1 million. So we had put a million in there, correct? And then we landed it there for... I, the reason we did that was you can't put money in a capital stabilization fund the same year you create it. Right. So we had to keep it somewhere, and yeah. then we just transferred fine. it back. Yeah. yeah okay, which, sorry. Which is fine. But I just wanted to understand the, f the funds flow here. So we yeah. had a million in and then a million out. Seems straightforward. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, we had the dividends. That's good. And then uh, we had some capital gains over the last eight months. And then we had our fees and expenses, which were $40,000. Um, and then the market fluctuation and non-cash transfers was a million five negative. So does it say, is that more, because I was giving credit for the million out. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say, again, I, I think that when we have uh, Mr. Flynn in, he could break this down for you much better okay. than I ever could. Got it. And then, um, okay. Um, and then it looks like on the back, um, it would it would seem to suggest uh, market fluctuation negative seven hundred and seventy three thousand on stabilization too. Okay, so uh, yeah, look for, we'll look forward to him um, uh, coming in. So uh, thank you. This is a great first meeting. And you're gonna now you got us this year. You're going back now and getting these old statements. Yeah, I can I can I yeah. can you know. In the interest of your earlier statement about being more proactive, I, I will get you all the things that you need um, in addition to that. So if there's specific items that you're you're looking for, I'm happy to to produce them or get them from uh, you know just for example right now with the uh, trust funds for example the the scholarship funds Flynn uh, has only had those for about six years so prior to that it was with a different firm and you know we we have those statements we don't do business with that firm anymore there's a seven year limit on how long certain institutions need to retain records so how far back we can go at a certain point i i can't promise well, even if we could but go back, um, let me turn my microphone on yeah. um even if we could go back at least for openers for say three years oh yeah absolutely uh, um that that yeah. would be helpful um for our discussion and yep. then you know we just take it from there um yeah not a problem but you and as i pointed out earlier too your insights as to the rules and all of that whatever you can find out about that from the state or whoever who polices this from the state level? Is this division of local services too that oversees whatever it is that yeah. you're doing or not doing? I'm not your position, I should say. Yeah, I'm not going to suggest that DLS comes in and audits our investment right. portfolio and right, says, right. you know, we're on the retirement board. They do. Okay. Um, not DLS, but a, a different state agency. Parac, take, right? Exactly. Assume, takes yeah. it that far. Um, we have an investment policy. Okay. We have very strict guidelines on where that money can be invested. Okay. Uh, doing a, a reconciliation of that, of just what funds are we in, yep. are they appropriate, is something that we're doing right now. Okay. If we find there's something you know, out of the ordinary, it'll be addressed. Um, if not, either way, we'll report it to the council. Just please make sure that the investment policy itself is exhaustive of all the state rules. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe uh, you, if there is someone who can support the treasurers of the state that 
can you could show them our investment policy yeah. and say, are we missing anything in this? Is this still current? And, you know, this was written five years ago. Yep. Are all the rules, is this in compliance? And then this way we know that if we're referring to the investment policy, that's gospel. Like we, Absolutely. Can, we can lean on in that. In fact, that was one of the first questions that I had. And uh, what I've come to find out is that most of this language here uh, and I, I can't say 100%, but most of this language here and the, the, the laws that it references come from the Mass Treasurer's Collectors Association best okay. practices. So these are, these are being followed by municipalities all across the Commonwealth. Great. Thank you, Rory. Yep. Just a, a quick comment. Um, I think we can wrap up. Um, it's kind of a good thing, and I have respect for three individuals. Cinder McNary began with the city in 1973. Rory, I graduated from high school in 1973. <laughs> I know your mom and dad were still in high school around those, <laughs> that decade somewhere. Ray DePelto began with the retirement board, you know, you know, doing everything they did in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he's retired yet, but I'm pretty sure he's still with them. He, he and you know, Tim Flynn, as I said, there's a connection. You know, is is I know his whole family, um, even before you know before he, he left and went to New York. Um, began I didn't realize it was 25 years, but began yeah. doing business in this area 25 years ago. I have, I have an incredible amount of respect for all three individuals. They all know each other. They all you know not work together, but a little bit with Cinder and Tim. I think mm -hmm. have to work together. Tanya's. The new sheriff on the block, but you know she knows them herself, and and I and I understand it. It's 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 investment world is a world when, it, especially when you're dealing with taxpayers' dollars, mm -hmm. you have to be very conservative and very careful. But you, and I agree with you. You need a third party, yeah. you know, out there watching the uh, watching the hen house and Absolutely. making the right moves on a timely basis. And all three individuals have, I believe, have an incredible history with the uh, city. Although Mr. Flynn is probably the one that's the least transparent, but I fault the city council for not asking more questions. I always, you know, it was always a plus figure when we looked at the money each year. <laughs> so most people were happy, but you know, I think Councilor Jardine's point is, you know, we should see a, a little bit more detail. But um, if, if you called Ray DePelto or Cindy, we've had Cindy McNary in here a number mm -hmm. of times. Yeah. The transparency and, and the wealth of knowledge is incredible. But with that in mind, motion to table. Motion second. is made and seconded. Second. Table. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, before we adjourn, so we don't, I don't, I apologize to the mayor. I don't know if he's still in the hallway. I try not to call a finance on Monday with the same night as the school committee, but it does happen. Is November 7th, February. it's still a blank up on the calendar here, okay for our next meeting? What was the date? I'm sorry. November 7th. I remember uh, before our next meeting. What do I feel no, like it would be in between. What do I feel like I have something that night? Um, let's that see. Night. It's a Monday. Let me see here. But I might be. I think or, or I'm sorry. Or no, no, no. That's that's a school committee. <laughs> um, no, wait a minute. Wait, we have a unique opportunity this month. We could use the 31st because that won't be a school committee. October 31st. Gee, what happens oh, yeah. that night? It's all the way. I'll be, I'll be. I'd rather be here than out there. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you giving out candy, you Grinch? Egg his house. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If, 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 if little Kevin's no trick or treating. No, little Kevin's not trick or treating. <laughs> um, all right. I, I can. November 7th will be a school committee meeting. So that I just just realized because the 31st scratches that. That changes everything. <laughs> um, I have a. So you're thinking 6:30, right? So. Well, we, I mean, we can do, we can try. I have a, a I have a, fi I have a 5:30, but uh, right. I'll, I'll, I should be done by then. I don't think it's. Uh, or, or we can try a Wednesday, whichever you know. No. <laughs> okay. You know this. We'll, we'll stay. We'll stay. We'll, we'll stay. Well, this is why I never ask this question. I just we'll do go it with and the then they Show up. You know? Six six thirty. <laughs> we'll All right, on, the, the on which night? Seventh. Does that work for you guys? Here, here. All right. All right. That's the night before right. the meeting. Right? Night before the well, meeting. That is the night before the meeting again because we, no one wants to do Halloween. Oh, wait a second. No, no. No, the first is a meeting. The first is a meeting. Yeah. That's right. So we w actually were. Hi. Right. Yeah, November 1st is our meeting, right? Yeah. yeah. Which means we're not going to get anything out for the first, but. So the 15th. We've been so good, I think that's all right. Yeah. But I, I, and I, and I like the. I think once a month is we're doing we're on a good pace. I think we're getting through the work. I, Sometimes you need a double, right? I, Unless you get really backlogged, right? I, it's it's 
there, there are, we, we get some big Anybody ticket there? items, more discussion that we're waiting. You know, we, we need those financial projections about the middle school, about the city. We oh, need yes. a few other things that, and they're all in the works, you know, and I know the building right. committee is working hard, but nobody's talking about the bonding and how that fits into the budget, or at least I shouldn't say nobody, the mayor understands, mm -hmm. the auditor understands. But we, we, we're, you know, we need to do that. And, you know, we're gonna have some, some months we're gonna need two meetings, some months we'll get away with one. How's Maybe that? Maybe three. Okay. I hope we never have to go to three. <laughs> No. <laughs> on, on, on the motion to adjourn all those in favor Aye. any opposed we stand adjourned have a wonderful <laughs> evening